Welcome back. The Committee to Protect Journalists says from 1992, when it began compiling the list of journalists attacked in the course of their work till date, a total of 1,189 journalists have been killed globally. Since the World Press Freedom Day this year focuses on safety of journalists, I have joining me from Abuja, the West Africa representative of the Committee to Protect Journalists, Peter Nkanga. Peter, thank you for joining us on the program. Now, I just read some information about the CPJ, about the number of journalists killed. Why do you think our lives are so endangered? It simply comes down to just one thing, and that is about information, whereby information is the core of what journalists work with. And um, from all our data, all the statistics, all research and findings point to attacks on the press occur when some group of people or an individual is trying to ensure that that information which the journalist has a responsibility to report is stifled, is prohibited or hindered or disallowed from getting to the public. So that's just the nutshell. Information sharing is one of the reasons, the main reason why you find that attacks on the press ongo. But what's of it all is that it can be a large extent when it reaches to impunity and impunity in terms of when journalists are killed and the killers go unpunished. Now, the purpose of the World Press Freedom Day is to appreciate journalists. Do you think the governments and society understand this? After that question, I would say yes and no. Whereby governments understand that there exists a day like May 3rd, which is the World Press Freedom Day. And it's a day where the world commemorates the virtues of why it's important to have a free press. And we find out that governments who are all members of the United Nations who understand the value of this particular day, they organize events, they meet with the media, and they all proclaim and profess to be press-free environments or to be lovers of the press, friends and partners with the media. And that is the yes part, they understand that. But the no part, which is the actual part, is this same government, this same authority is who we see as coming out on May 3rd to come and profess being friends with the media, are also the same authorities who condone attacks on the press. Most times you find out that it is mostly state actors who are the worst offenders, who are the worst press predators in the world. From Africa to Europe to the Asia, all around the world, we have cases of these same governments who commemorate the war press freedom method still being the worst offenders. And that's really the point I'm trying to make here. In theory, yes, you understand the value of this, but in practice, a lot of them don't practice what they preach. Can a journalist really tell the truth with all these surrounding threats? Evil thrives when good people say and do nothing. Injustice will, pers will persist, subsist and persist when those who have the responsibility to take action to stop that injustice do nothing. We cannot afford to go against what our rules and our laws that bind us. Let's just take the case of Nigeria. There is just one particular section of the Nigerian constitution which dictates the obligation of the mass media and that is section 22 and that is the priority of a journalist the patriotic responsibility of every media practitioner is to the people as guaranteed by section 22 and it simply says something it says that we must uphold the responsibility and accountability of the government to the people that is whereby if you know we want to be responsible and accountable, the truth will set us free. Anything other than the truth will never set the test of time. And yes, I can answer to your question that is I guess a journalist can really tell the truth without against all odds, against whatever repercussion, against whatever threats that comes out. We must stand for that truth. And that's the oath we took as journalists. That is the responsibility we have. Anything other than that is unacceptable. Are there universal laws that protect journalists so they can continue to report the truth? The foundation and the basis of all human rights comes down to the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. But we also have the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, which is the, which is like the bedrock on which human rights cases are tried across Africa and, of course, Nigeria. And Article 9 is the part that really, really guarantees the, the, the rights of a journalist to report, which is whereby every individual has to have the right to receive information. And who gives the information that the individual receives? It is the media. Every individual, individual has the right to express and disseminate his opinions within the law. Now, this African Charter on Human and People's Rights has been the bedrock on which a lot of landmark cases across the African courts in Tanzania, even across the ECOWAS courts here in, in Abuja, in Nigeria, have ruled on cases that have to do with press freedom. Now, let's take it a bit further. We also have, of course, 
even across West Africa, the ECOWAS Revised Treaty. The ECOWAS Revised Treaty speaks specifically on the press in Article 66. Amongst its subsections is the Section 2, where you have that the right to ensure the respect for all the rights of journalists. That is what member states of the ECOWAS community, community of West African states have an obligation to, to ensure the respect for the rights of journalists. And these are all international instruments, all international uh, laws that ensure that journalists can practice without fear of reprisal, that journalists can go out and seek news and disseminate information to the citizenry of any country to ensure that those rights that are enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights are protected, to ensure that the constitution of various countries which guarantees the citizen the right to know about their welfare, the right to know about their politics, the right to know about their socioeconomic well-being. These are the rights that ensure that journalists worldwide in Africa, in Nigeria, have the right to operate without fear of reprisal. Now, Peter, usually when we talk about the worst places in the world to be a journalist, we're always quick to recall countries in the Middle East and places where terrorist groups thrive. But doesn't a clampdown on media freedom also make a country or state a threat to a journalist doing his job? The clampdown on media freedom is a clampdown on democracy. The clampdown on a journalist is a clampdown on the citizen. The clampdown on the press is the clamber on every human being's right to know. And when you talk more of the government, what is the government? Government is a representation of people for the larger society. Authorities in governments who want to abuse that right, that means they have something, an hidden agenda. Any leader, any authority, any individual holding a, a position of responsibility should always put at the foremost that that responsibility is to the people. And therefore, it is a clampdown on the media, the clampdown on a journalist who is reporting, giving information, disseminating information to people, and that particular individual or journalist is being clamped down, is being censored, is being threatened, and worst of all, is being killed. That simply is putting a threat to the democratic principles on which countries like Nigeria is founded upon. And if I might just quickly add here that, unfortunately, we are seeing this increase in clampdown on the media worldwide, globally in all continents, and Africa, West Africa, Nigeria inclusive. And so to answer your question categorically, usually when we talk about the worst places in the world to be a journalist, we should always remember that any form of attack on a journalist, on the right to inform the citizenry, is an attack that is one too many and should be considered unacceptable. How would you describe media freedom in Nigeria?